Story recapped here. Today, I'm gonna explain a comedy, drama, and horror movie called Zoo. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One gloomy afternoon, John comes home from work and immediately greets his wife, Karen, who's cooking in the kitchen. However, Karen doesn't acknowledge his arrival and barely even talks to him when he tries to initiate a conversation. Later that night, they watch a movie, and John tries to talk to his wife again. When he gets the same blank response, he leaves the living room, but Karen stops him, saying that she has something to tell him. She hesitates, but ends up saying something irrelevant. The next day, John gets ready for work and heads to the bathroom. As he stares in the mirror, he suddenly feels a strong impact that creates a hole in their bathroom ceiling. John peeps into the hole and sees a few fighter jets flying by. He immediately plans to leave their apartment to see what the fuss is about. However, Karen approaches him and attempts to say something important again. Outside, John is shocked to see that an airplane has crashed into a nearby building. The man beside him says that the scene looks similar to the 9-11 accident, which John knows nothing about. Suddenly, a horrifying event takes place on the streets, and he quickly returns to their apartment. John then reports to Karen that the people downstairs are biting. Confused? Karen looks down from their window and sees two people eating a man alive. Nothing could have prepared them for this nightmare, but now they have to focus on surviving until help arrives. So Karen and John list down the food and supplies they have and realize they could only last them a couple of days. For this reason, they decide to loot their neighbor's homes. John goes out first after agreeing that Karen would do it next time. A few moments later, John arrives with some food and tells Karen that their neighbors, the Andersons, have their door on locked. This interests Karen, and so, she gears up and proceeds to loot the Andersons' house. When she returns with a few bottles of wine, she urges John to gear up and steal their neighbor's television. Later that night, they watch the news with their freshly stolen television. According to the reports, they should avoid contact with the infected and must put up an X mark on their window so that the rescuers could find them. The following morning, John wakes up and gets greeted by Karen, who just got back from looting. It seems like his wife just went a little extra with gathering supplies that she stole the dress too. Later on, John ponders upon what they should do if the infected people try to enter their building, and Karen simply tells him that they have to defend themselves. For this matter, they both practice their response against potential attacks by preparing some tools and weapons. Later that night, Karen hears a noise from outside their door, and she immediately alerts John to come over. They quickly open it and get greeted by an infected person, who immediately tries to bite them. Luckily, they managed to fend it off unscathed. Stressed out with what just happened, John expresses how he would kill to smoke at that moment. Hearing what her husband just said, Karen grabs a few cigarettes from their cupboard, and John curiously asks her what else she's got in there. To his surprise, Karen brings out some illegal stimulants and quickly snorts it all up. Although John is against it, he eventually gets swayed into trying it out himself. Later on, Karen proudly reveals a pistol that she owns and her other collection of stimulants. The next day, Karen wakes up to a sound of a gunshot. She immediately gets up and heads to the kitchen, only to find John playing with her pistol, and he even shot a pot that Karen's mother gave her. Pissed, she takes the gun from him and goes to the bathroom to shower. Later that day, they place the broken pieces of the pot in their doorway to signify that they are inside the house and proceed with their routine, working out and preparing some weapons. However, they take breaks from their workout session to snort some stimulants. One time, as they do their usual routine, they hear a noise at the door again and someone is trying to open the handle from the outside. John grabs a knife for precautionary measures, while Karen takes the hammer. They soon open the door to find that it's their neighbors, Emily and Leo, hoping to stay in their home. Karen doesn't want to let them in, but John insists, so they welcome the couple into their home. As soon as they settle into the living room, Leo explains that he and Emily got stuck in the laundry room right after the crash, and when they got out, infected people were already in the building. However, they managed to find the broken pot on Karen and John's doorstep and instantly got the message. The neighboring couple's stomachs suddenly growl in the middle of their conversation, so they politely ask for some food to eat. Karen agrees, but as she and John get to the kitchen, she instantly argues that Leo and Emily can't stay. Back in the living room, Emily talks badly about Karen and says that after her miscarriage, she went a little crazy. Needless to say, there's obviously a hidden tension between the two women. Moments later, the neighboring couple finishes their meal, and Emily notices a dress on a nearby chair. She says that she has the same one at home. 
and Leo adds that they have the same television too. Hearing this, Karen and John awkwardly exchange looks. Later on, they all have a good drink and soon agree to take a night's rest. Emily then asks where they should stay, and Karen says they can sleep on the floor and may take a few cushions with them. Though Emily is secretly offended, she sleeps on the floor with Leo. Karen pulls up a little stunt to piss off her neighbor even more in the middle of the night. She makes loud moaning noises and pretends to have an intense time with John. Threatened, Emily gets on top of Leo and makes loud moaning noises too. However, Karen doesn't back down and tells John to slap her from behind. And when he does, it's so loud that Emily has to give up and accept defeat. The following morning, the four of them have breakfast, and Karen tells the other couple to do some organizing and tidying up. This triggers Emily, so she alerts her husband that they have to kill the threats. Later on, Karen and John fall asleep on the couch, and the other couple plans to stab them with a knife. However, their plan fails when Karen wakes up and offers to bake them cookies. Little does the other couple know that Karen is aware of their murder scheme, so she adds a secret ingredient to the cookies, amphetamines. She puts in two tablespoons of it, and it caused Leo and Emily to get into shock and die. Guilty of what they've done, Karen and John snort some stimulants to relieve the stress. Suddenly, they hear a weird sound coming from the living room and find Leo alive again. But this time, he seems like an infected person without his own mind. So Karen shoots him dead with a pistol. Suddenly, Emily springs up from the couch and gets shot too. Later that night, John and Karen drag the dead bodies out of their home and snort some Valium before bed. However, they are too asleep to notice that the rescue team requests everyone to turn their lights lights on. Because of this, they both miss their opportunity to escape. The next day, they share a relaxing moment in the bathtub, wherein Karen says that she wants to adopt a child if they manage to survive. John agrees, and they both take turns in expressing how much they love each other. Later that night, John takes Karen on a little indoor date, wherein they pretend to be strangers who are trying to get acquainted with one another. As the night progresses, things get more intimate, and they start to make love. However, they get disturbed when they hear a knock on the door. Karen immediately runs to open the door. Then John stops her, but it's too late. Suddenly, three men enter their home, demanding valuable items, but they honestly have nothing of value, so the leader tells his men to beat up John while he assaults Karen. Karen is helpless at first, but she throws some flour into the man's face and stabs him in the neck with a knife. The other two men enter the room to see a bloody scene, but John quickly shoots both of them. Right away, John and Karen drag the bodies out of their home. Later that night, they hear the sound of choppers, but the rescue team doesn't notice them. For this matter, they both decide that they will rush through the horde of infected people and escape tomorrow. The next day, they execute their plan, but they run back to their house when they miscalculated the number of infected people downstairs. To make matters worse, Karen got bitten in the leg, and it's only a matter of time until she gets infected. However, John guarantees a pharmaceutical company is out there, waiting to cash in on their vaccines. This reassures his wife, so they head to bed shortly after. In the middle of their sleep, Karen has a nightmare about her losing control, so she plans to take off before the virus consumes her. However, John sees her approaching the door and immediately stops her from leaving. He later on gives his wife a bit of his blood, hoping that it'll keep her afloat until help arrives. Karen denies her hunger at first, but John argues that it's his choice to make, so she just complies. The next day, Karen and John stand by the window and realize that they might be the only ones left in the city. Considering that it's going to be her last day, John tells Karen all his plans for the future, and he also discusses how everything will play out in his head. John explains that the rescue team will arrive the next day, and Karen will receive the vaccine, which has a side effect that will allow her to bear a child. John doesn't shy away from telling his wife that he wants to grow old with her, and Karen also tells him how much she wants that too. They suddenly bring break into tears, but Karen tells John that she needs to take a bath and leaves. In the bathroom, she plans on taking her own life, but it doesn't push through when John suddenly arrives to offer her a glass of his blood. Knowing that it won't be long until she becomes fully infected, Karen shares an intimate night with her husband, and they make love for the last time. The next day, John finds himself alone in the bed and proceeds to go to the bathroom, where he finds a note from Karen. 
In the note, she tells John how much she loves him and how perfect their life has been in her head. However, in her deepest nightmares, the hunger took over, and she could no longer fight it. For this reason, she asks John to end her misery, and tells him that he can find her in the nursery. With a breaking heart, John proceeds to go to the nursery and finds that Karen has changed herself up. Sadly, she is now fully infected, and there's no way to save her. Moments later, John takes the pistol and aims it at his wife's head. Before he pulls the trigger, Karen looks at him with her dead eyes, and he apologizes for what he's about to do. Suddenly, someone breaks the door down, and it's the rescue team. They search the place for any survivors, and they eventually discover the nursery. To their horror, they find Karen and John, who are both infected and chained to the wall. The rescuers wonder why their hands are taped together, and the commander simply says in disbelief that it's love. Moments after, the rescuers decide to shoot both of them down. In the end, John couldn't kill the love of his life, so he joined her in her misery. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.